Welcome to Gentle Yoga with Leo Bray on behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs. Visit us on the web at urbanyoga.org or on Facebook at Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center. In either place, you can see the schedule, which changes every month. And you can stop by the tip jar to make contributions to support our online offerings. And speaking of schedule changes, uh, this class, Monday, is nothing new. Uh, 8.15 Wednesday and Friday, also nothing new. These days, it's me instead of Brianna. Brianna had taken them over for me uh, in the winter when I had some medical stuff going on, and she's got some stuff going on. So same classes, different people. There are two new classes, Wednesday, 5.15 p.m., midweek chill, and uh, Saturday morning, 9.30, guided meditation with mindful movement. And those are both me as well. So we've got five chances a week to get together with me live, plus all the, all the videos up on YouTube for when your schedule doesn't allow the live time together. So you can start in the position I'm in, if you like, with soles of the feet touching, knees splayed out to the sides, with the option to support your legs with blocks or without, whichever feels better for you. If that's not comfortable, rest the soles of your feet on the ground, firmly planted, letting your knees lean in towards each other by sticking your heels out a bit, your toes in a bit. Let the legs go kind of passive while keeping the feet planted. Do what feels right for you with your hands and your arms. Maybe they just rest on the ground. Maybe they rest on your body in the place of your choice. What feels supportive? what feels grounding, what feels most comfortable. Close your eyes if you want to. Observe your breath as it slows down and gets deeper. This is the basic reaction to focusing on the breath. As you finish each exhale, maybe imagine your body drawing a little closer to the ground. Based on what students shared before we began class today, we'll focus on some twisting movements and postures aiming to open up in the shoulder girdle, pelvic area, lower back, upper legs. Some of those two central cores. We think of our core like this, the midrib, the stomach, and the muscles behind the, the core. But up here in the shoulder girdle, the area surrounding the heart, there's also like a functional core, an energetic core to the body. And they're both sort of traffic jam areas where uh, tension can get stuck. We can get uh, bottlenecks in our prana flow. So see what we can do to wring out some of those things and let it all flow better, let things move a little more easily see what we can tune into and shed to resolve. Scan your body, head to toe. Take in whatever sensations are going on. 
doesn't have to just be where are the trouble spots, what hurts, what feels stiff. Notice what feels good. Notice what might just feel neutral. Notice if there is something you can't feel. Why isn't that part of my back touching the mat? It doesn't matter why, I just notice. Part of the back midway between the shoulder blades and the sacrum isn't on the floor. It doesn't have to be. I'm just noticing it. That's just one example for me. Notice whatever you've got to notice. And maybe before we start to move through our practice with these, these thoughts of what's stuck, what is being held in the body that's not necessary, what's excessive, what might we relinquish and let go of, and also what might we cultivate and take in. So you can tune into these things, whatever they are for you, things coming in as you breathe in and come into different postures and things flowing out, <coughs> things being released as you exhale and come out of each shape. So make use of that if it serves you. Some people find it's too much to think about that stuff and they just want to focus on the movement and the sensation, but we can always add a layer or subtract a layer. Deciding throughout practice what to what to focus on, what to let go and not worry about. We'll take three cleansing breaths and if you want, accompany them by breathing in what you want and breathing out what you don't. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth with a sigh. Now, if you had your legs as I do with the soles of your feet together and your knees sticking out, let your arms help your legs to come out of that position. Nudge those knees up towards each other. Let the soles of your feet rest on the mat. Let your knees point up and lean in a bit. And we'll start with some real gentle twisting from here. Now reach your arms out to the sides with your palms facing up. See if you can feel both shoulder blades press against the floor. And without even moving your feet from wherever they are, let your knees slowly go back and forth. And as your knees move, Maybe your pelvis starts to roll. Maybe your sacrum starts to lift. So the movements 
might be very small and it might be bigger depending on how your body's feeling. But see if you can keep your shoulders on the ground, just letting your lower body do this slow motion, simple dance back and forth. And maybe as you go down to one side, the outer knee touches the floor. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe the inner leg, the top one, touches the bottom outer leg as they go down. Maybe not. My top leg is not touching my bottom foot or bottom leg as they go down, and I'm not going to try to force it to do so. My outer knees are touching the floor, but I'm letting them just fall there. I'm not pushing them towards the floor. And then let's just try pausing. So next time, you come all the way over to one side, just stay there and hang out and see if spending a few breaths here brings any change. Still not pushing, not aiming at any goal. What happens with a few deep breaths? Does that upper leg lower a little more? Does the lower leg go down a bit more because the lower leg isn't resting on the floor as mine is. Just noticing. I'm not noticing much change and that's okay. I'm not gonna push for change, try to make something change. Observing that not much is changing here. feel a sensation of release in my outer hip, but I don't feel like that top knee is moving. That's all right. That's just what's going on. Let's well, nice and slowly bring it all up through center. Take your time to go over to the other side, still keeping your shoulders grounded throughout and see what happens here. Maybe the outer leg touches down. Maybe the upper leg touches the lower leg, maybe not. See what a few nice deep breaths does. Maybe the twist gets deeper and it's perfectly okay if it doesn't. It's equally okay if you can't tell. You might find yourself as you're lying flat with your eyes closed in this funny position saying, Leo, I don't know what my knee's doing. It's there somewhere. And I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. Nice and slowly, bring your knees back up to center. Now let's try extending the right leg down along the floor. So you press your right calf and right heel against the floor, flex your right foot back towards you. 
Try a different kind of twist here. Bring your left hand to your heart. And start to walk your left hand towards your right hand. So it's going to come across the right side of your chest and your right shoulder. And let that movement lift the left hip and start to roll your torso. That's like traction through your fingers. And if it works better for you to have this left hand on the floor than on your right arm, that's okay too. And if as you come onto your side, you find that it's not comfortable for your head to hang out in the air like this, you might grab a block or a folded towel or something. You can stick something between the side of your head and the floor. And maybe you can bring your palms and your fingertips together here. So that right leg stays long, that left knee stays bent. And let's slowly just rewind that, walk that hand back in. Now, if you gave yourself a little pillow like I did, you decide when you move that out of the way. Moving mindfully and slowly. So we come back with both shoulder blades touching down, both arms out to the sides. And then we're going to switch because we do everything twice, pretty much everything twice. Draw the right knee up, plant the right foot, extend your left leg, press the back of your leg to the floor, flex your left foot back towards you. Bend your right elbow, bring your right hand towards your heart. And start to walk on your fingertips, walk across your chest, across your left shoulder, and let that traction of the arm start to roll your torso to the left. So you come up onto your left hip, up onto the left side of your head with and without support of a prop under your head. And maybe you can walk your right hand all the way onto your left hand, palms and fingers pressing together. Take your time to walk your hand back up your arm, up to the shoulder, slowly across the body, rocking gently back onto both shoulder blades, both arms extended. Draw the left knee up, let both feet rest on the floor.
Draw your knees to your chest and hug your knees and rock and roll to massage your back against the ground. Now, often in the end of practice, we'll include doing a supine twist, and there are a few different ones that we sort of cycle through. And today we're going to focus on several of them right here, still near the beginning of practice, maybe at the center of practice. Simplest one is with the knees parallel like this, drawn in towards your chest. Reach your arms out to the sides, palms up, shoulder blades grounded. That's a theme that's common to a lot of supine twist work. Now, the closer you bring your knees to your torso as you come into a supine twist, the deeper the twist feels. So you can decide how that's gonna go. If something starts to feel too deep, one way to regulate that is to twist less. The other is to move the knees further from the torso and continue the twist. So you decide how it's gonna go. You can move those knees anytime. You can back out or see if your body wants to come in further. Let's go first with knees to the right, head to the left and keep your shoulders grounded. Really take your time and think of gravity leading the way, not pushing the knees down. Yes, there's some muscular exertion and turning the head to the left, but imagine it's just gravity, bringing your head to the left, just as gravity is bringing your knees to the right. And again, maybe the right leg touches down on the floor, maybe not. Maybe the left leg touches down against the right, maybe not. Now, some folks like to go deeper, like to exert a bit. As long as you're gentle and you're listening to your body, that's okay. If you wanted to try that, you can bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee and nudge, <clears throat> just nudge that knee down. And of course, this deepens the sensation in the outer hip and the lower back. Another way you can deepen this twist, you can leave that right hand on the floor and just start to lengthen this bent left leg and let the weight of that leg hang in the air. So sometimes just that different shape with the leg will let gravity draw that leg down lower, deepening the sensation of the twist in the left side. And you could combine these things. You could have the leg extended and Use the right hand to nudge the leg down. Just listen to your body and don't overdo anything. Back away from anything that hurts. Try to keep the shoulder blades on the floor. If you feel a shoulder blade lifting, that's a good sign that maybe you're going too far with the twisting. Take your time to rewind and come out, <clears throat> back up through center. Eyes pointed up at the ceiling, knees pointed up at the ceiling. 
and then start to twist the opposite way. Like so to the left and head to the right. One side might go further than the other. This could be a small difference or a bigger difference, and it doesn't matter. It's okay to notice. And we don't need to make one side be just like the other in shape or in sensation. We don't even have to do the same variations on this side that we did on the other side. It's okay if you want to, but it's not required. I'm not going to move my left arm or my right leg or do anything but just breathe right here. And I do feel some change in the twist just from the action of my breathing. And slowly come back up to center. We'll try out a different leg configuration. Plant the sole of your right foot and cross your left ankle above your right knee. So this makes what we sometimes call a figure four shape with the legs. It looks vaguely like that type number four. And just as with the previous twist, the closer the knees come to the torso, the deeper the twist feels. So you can keep the right foot on the floor, let your legs go to the right and turn your head to the left. Or you could press into the ball of your foot and lift your heel, then twist. You could lift your whole foot a little and then twist or lift your foot a lot and bring those knees in closer. Shoulders grounded, let the legs come to the right and turn your head to the left. This is an energizing twist. We've had a very slow and a sedate practice, so maybe we'll appreciate a little energy boost we get from twisting with this leg configuration. Maybe you notice it, this energy boost, maybe it's more subtle, doesn't quite register. Just tune into however it feels. I'm not gonna tell you how it's supposed to feel, how it should feel. Take your time to bring it all back to center. Cross your legs the opposite way. 
Decide if you want to bring your knees closer to your chest. When you're ready, let your legs come to the left. Turn your head to the right, check in with your shoulder blades and see that they're grounded. Take your time to come back to center. Now we'll check out a deeper twist. Cross your left knee over your right knee. Here too, you could just come into the twist, starting with the right foot planted on the floor. We'll press into the ball of the foot to lift the right heel. Or lift the whole foot and draw the knees in as close as you want. Shoulders stay grounded. Bring your legs to the right and turn your head to the left. Now this one has typically the deepest sensation. Sometimes brings about those cracking sounds in the lower back. If you want to here, be very gentle. You can bring the right hand to the outside of the left knee, like we did in one of the earlier twists, and draw those knees over a bit more. Sometimes if you feel your shoulder blade lift away from the floor, it can be helpful to bend the left elbow here and bring the left hand to like the temple or the forehead. Sometimes changing the arm position will ground the shoulder more effectively. Lending a greater feeling of stability. Maybe even hand to the heart. You can play with different hand positions and see which of them, if any, help your shoulder ground better. Really take your time to come back up through center. Switch your legs, cross your right knee, over your left knee. Decide how close you want to bring your knees towards your chest. Let your legs go to the left as you turn your head to the right.
Bring everything back up to center. Uncross your legs. Hold on to your knees. Inhale, reach your arms and legs straight up towards the ceiling. Exhale, draw your heels towards your butt and your hands towards your chest. And take a few more breaths. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, draw down, bend those legs. After your next exhale, raise your arms over your head. Let the weight of your body tip you to one side. Doesn't matter which side. Coming through fetal position, plant your hands. Shift up to a seat. But don't get comfortable sitting. We're just going to shift from sitting to lying face down. However you want to get there. No one says every transition has to be pretty or precise. Lie down on your belly, rest your chin. If it's not comfortable resting on your chin, rest on one cheek. Reach your arms out to the side, palms down on the floor. Grip the floor with your right hand. Walk your left hand in towards you and press away from the floor. So you rock up onto your right hip. Let the right side of your head rest on the floor. See if you can bring your hand right in here by your chin or somewhere thereabouts so that arm is really actively supporting you. It's a lot of force on the front of the right shoulder here opening it against the floor. And maybe this seems like a lot to do. You could stay right here and breathe. You can come out if you need to, start over if you want. To explore further, you can, like opening a pair of scissors, lift your left leg away from the right. Let the left heel drift back. If that feels okay, and you want to bend your left knee, let the weight of your leg hang. Don't push your foot down. Just let that bent leg hang there. Think of your heel drifting towards the floor, but letting gravity and breath do the work, not pushing your foot down. Maybe you could easily push your foot to the floor, but let it fall, don't push it. Maybe it'll surprise you and touch down, maybe it won't touch down. You can keep this left hand here for stability, or if you feel more adventurous, you might reach your left hand up towards the ceiling and turn back and forth like an owl turning its head. You could also try bending your elbow and reaching the back of your hand to your back. Whatever part of your back it wants to reach.
will come out just as slowly as we came into this funny shape. If you move your left hand, take your time and bring it back over here to plant it near your chin, press into it for stability. If you move your left leg, take your time, lift the heel, lengthen the leg, bring it forward above the other leg, let it down, close the scissors, walk your left hand back out to the side, Come to rest on your belly and on your chin or on one cheek and take a couple breaths here before we do all that the other way around. Notice how each side of the body feels different. How's that right shoulder doing? How's that left hip? What else is speaking up as you listen in? When you're ready, gripping the floor with your left hand, slowly walk your right hand in and press away from the floor to roll onto your left side, pressing the front of your left shoulder open against the ground. Maybe that's enough, or you might want to try raising your right leg, letting it drift back, maybe bending it, spending a few breaths here to see what happens with the weight of that leg. Maybe opening that hip some more, twisting, a bit more on the lower spine. And let's slowly rewind it all again. If you move your right leg, pick it up, extend it, bring it forward, let it down against your left leg. Take your time to walk your right hand back out to the side, come into rest on your belly and on your cheek or chin for a few noticing breaths, scan your body. Bring your hands in under your shoulders. Pressing into your hands, inhale, lift your head and chest. Think of drawing your elbows towards each other, towards your torso. Just lift to the height that feels okay in your lower back. If you like, and you can stay up there for a few breaths, you look over your right shoulder, look to your right heel. Come through center and then look for your left heel. And if you want to let yourself down for a breath or two and then lift up to do this again, looking side to side, that's another option. 
I can't see my heels. So forward is the operative word, looking towards the heel, looking for the heel. I know I've got two heels back there somewhere, and I can't see them today. Despite having had physical therapy this morning, where I practiced looking side to side and had some traction work done side to side, when you've had enough, exhale, low or on down. Inhale, press yourself up and back. It's just loosely passing through the table. Cross your ankles. You walk your hands in towards your knees and roll over your ankles. Or you can tip onto one hip and swing your legs to the side. We're just sitting up for a moment. See the position is just a transition. It's a handy one to take a drink in. Not always safe to take a drink when you're lying down. You take your time to lie down on your back. When you're ready. And believe it or not, we're going to do one more supine twist. <laughs> Draw your right knee towards your chest and take hold of your knee with your left hand. Doesn't have to be the front of the knee like I'm doing. Maybe it's more comfortable to bring your hand behind your knee or above your knee on the outside. Whatever grip works for you is just fine. Left leg is long, like Left foot, flex back, reach your right arm to the side. Keep your shoulders grounded, draw your knee to the left, and turn your head to the right. This might be one where you feel your right shoulder blade lift and you bend that arm to help the shoulder blade stay down. Come back up to center and switch legs, extend and lower your right leg and your left arm. Hold your left knee with your right hand. Draw your knee to the right and turn your head to the left. Come on back up to center. Drop both knees in. 
Reach your feet up. Reach your hands up to grab your legs or your feet. Play with bending and straightening your arms and legs. Invert for as long as you like, exploring movements that feel beneficial to you or that just feel fun. When you feel complete, make your way to any resting pose you like. Shavasana can be the posture you're most comfortable in. Maybe you close your eyes, maybe you don't. Maybe you're lying flat, maybe you're not. Maybe you don't use props, maybe you do. You might focus on your breath or not bother focusing at all.
start to find some even deeper breaths. And move around bit by bit. Building up to bigger and bigger movements in your own time. When you're ready, gently sit up. Bring your hands to your heart. Thank you for sharing your practice today. The light within me sees and honors that same light within you. Namaste.